All right. Good day, everybody. Welcome to Beams and Columns. I am here with my guest this way, Sean Bryant from the UK. I'm joining you from the US. Sean's on the other side of the world in the UK. Um, how are you, Sean? We we actually haven't uh, haven't talked in a while like we normally do. Yeah, I know. It's It's been just a little bit on the insane side since the beginning of the year for me. Um, my wife currently is, well, she's just set up a new business. So I've been helping out by drilling holes and lifting heavy objects, basically. So nice. Uh, and I, I, that was most of my January. <laughs> nice. Well, I, yeah, but I saw that you also got like a, a, an award from uh, from yeah, Autodesk. Yeah, that was a lovely little New Year's surprise from Autodesk. Um, I got a special recognition award in the Autodesk community. Um, nice. I'm an Autodesk expert elite, so we we get to contribute in ways. Um, other users possibly don't. And it was just a, a, a nice little thing to kind of crop up on the horizon. I, I got notified of it sort of literally at the end of December and it arrived. And I, I did a little blog about it recently as well. Um, and sadly, there's a bit of Star Wars Lego techie stuff in the blog as well. But you'll get that if you read it. I, so, yeah, I saw the. I saw the Star Wars Lego. Yeah. 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 That was, that was a gift from Michelle, my wife for Christmas. And I thought, you know what, that's got to be built. So I built that on Boxing Day. So that, that was, that was a nice little gift from her. My, my, my kids for Christmas got me the Lego uh, friends uh, TV set. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. So, so I have to build that, but I, I, in, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking why, if I, if I was really a good like creator, I would do something where I would, film that in stop motion and then of course bring in like how I'm following the blueprints and oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, maybe, there's, there's, maybe I need to convert those to digital drawings. I, I, I don't there, know. I've, there, there's, like some, there's, there's some, there. there's some TikTokers and Instagrammers out there that I think that's their life's work to do everything stop motion brick by brick. <laughs> that's right. um, talking of brick by brick, obviously we've got an exciting one today because both you and I are quite closely linked to basically cloud-based information and so on so we, we we've got a, a rather wonderful guest from dropbox today that we both know very very well and we've known for a long long time and it'll be really good to obviously speak to her about how dropbox is basically working all the way across the aec ecosystem so i guess we'd better get shireen no, in and we'll get chatting yeah, absolutely. So we're going to bring Sharin Arnold in to the live stream here. Sharin, uh, welcome. Well, How are you? Uh, good, good. Good morning and good afternoon. So excited to be here. And yeah, it feels like only yesterday that we spoke, Sharin, though. <laughs> I know. You, no, it's not. The day before yesterday we spoke. Um, but yeah, so basically, I'll, do you want me to introduce Jim? I'll, I'll introduce yeah, Sharin yeah, ever so absolutely. briefly. I've known Shireen since her Autodesk days, um, which is oh, okay. going, back, going back a bit. And basically, I kind of saw her make that leap to Dropbox. And we had, we had a bit of a chat a few days ago. And Jim and myself, have, we, how long have we talked about Dropbox and how it all works and how it goes across the industries and so on? And I got talking to Shireen and I thought to myself, this is a great piece of podcasting that we can do because we can explain... Jim's role in the industry, my role in the industry, and then we've got Shireen, the facilitator of everything that we do in the cloud. So do you want to just jump in here, Shireen, and explain what you're doing at Dropbox and how Dropbox kind of links Jim and myself together on a project? Yeah, for sure, definitely. So um, I'm super excited to be here today, this morning, this afternoon. I'm industry lead for construction at Dropbox. And some of you may be wondering, like, OK, that's that sounds quite interesting. But um, I'm really helping drive where the strategy goes from the construction perspective. And well, you know, my, my title is construction, but it is really AECO um, because we really are that that end to end solution from being utilized. It's about defining specific workflows. You know, many know Dropbox as file sync and share, but we're much more than just file sync and share. So how can we build out and connect those end to end workflows? Um, so in that case, it's really about the communication going on from pre-construction, conceptual, even investments, right? So I, I, I want to build a development and I'm going in out for investment. You know, we have DocSend 
a great way in which to share information uh, back and forth in a private secure area that I can have an NDA around it. So Sean, like as an, as an engineer, or I can come in and, and share my content. We have DWG previews. Um, it's about extended collaboration with the stakeholders, with the teams going down to the field, right? I, I would say it to sum it up, it's really ease of use. Um, ease of use, mobile, simplicity, really trying to reduce the chaos that exists out there. We have enough going on in the world. I, I like both of you, I think, Sean, you mentioned have had a chaotic start to the year. Same here. Oh, yeah. um, it's, I think, 2023, we've hit the ground running um, quite fast. So why not reduce that chaos from the mundane tasks that we potentially have to do on, on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, and Sharon, that's kind of how you and I met, right? So, so Sean has known you for a while since the Autodesk days. You and I just met at the uh, Bluebeam Extreme Conference um, in San Diego several months ago. And you were talking about simple solutions to digital workflows, I think was the topic. Is that, do I yeah. have that right? Yeah. So, and, yeah. And, 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 you know, you, you threw one just quick, easy solution up there that I know is not new to Dropbox. I know it's been there for a while. I just didn't know about it. And that is that automatic file conversion, which I guess in the back of my head, I, I knew was there, right? So I knew that I could create a folder and have just about anything that anybody put in that folder automatically converted to a PDF, yeah. which is great for Bluebeam, obviously. Um, but when I listen to you talk, I learned oh, I can do the same thing and have a an AutoCAD file, a DWG file converted to a PDF, which is great for me because like uh, like Sean and I talk about all the time, Sean's the AutoCAD guy. I am way, way far away from being the AutoCAD guy. And and I know I'm not alone in this. I, I have um, engineering firms that I do a little consulting with, big engineering firms, and they'll have you know, the, the six principal engineers or the 10 principal engineers, and most of them don't have AutoCAD on their, on their computer. They can't open it up. And so there's this constant, um, you know, no, you can't just send them the CAD file you've been working on. You have to convert it first. And, and um, again, just kind of simple solution, like a nice little folder that's documents that need to be reviewed. And all they have to do is drag their DWG file over there. Yep. And when the engineer clicks on it, they see a PDF file that they can then manipulate in whatever it is, Bluebeam and add their markups and comments. And um, and Sean and I have tested that out a couple of times, you know, just to yeah. see yeah. how it works. And, and it's, it's, it, it's very, very simple, um, yeah. but it, it works really well. It's cool. Well, and I, I think that's the exciting aspect about being at Dropbox is a lot of these capabilities have existed for some time. Um, we see a quite heavy organic growth with the AEC vertical and just sharing large content, right? Sure. But when, when you start to talk about the features and capabilities, such as that conversion to PDF capability in a contextual manner, it blows people's minds. It's super simple. But in the presentation at XCon, we had one gentleman that spoke to one of our, our technical individuals that was there literally, I think, for half an hour about that. He, he was like, are you telling me I can really just put a DWG, I can put it in that folder, automatically converts it, which means it locks it down, right? It's not editable anyway, anymore. Right. Right. And I have access to it within Dropbox because I don't have an AutoCAD license or I don't want to go in there. Mm -hmm. And I can then kick off a workflow with Bluebeam, right? So I, it's that connected workflow. And, and at the table, Jim, where we met, I remember the one individual, he was a, a contractor who said they ended up using Dropbox just because it, it just works, right? It, it's just that simplicity. It just works. Um, it, it's not rocket science, right? So. I, I love those types of stories, those quick wins. Well, and there's and, a, there's also a few, um, I, I mean, my so my Dropbox account dates back to, um, I don't know, like seven or eight years when I was working with um, Fieldwire yep. when, when they were a little bit new. They've been bought by Hilti now and kind of expanding, but Fieldwire for a long time has actually had a, a two-way sync yep. with Dropbox, which 
I and I have a, a field wire course on LinkedIn Learning, and I go through like a little bit of workflow um, that's that's possible using that two way sync. But after I recorded that, I started to think of like, oh, there's a like here's a bunch more things I can do with it, right? So I can, you know, again work with those people on the team that we sort of forget about, right? The designers, um, even the owner. Yeah. who um, who may be hiring people as I turn the, the project over, you know, the owner may be hiring their own trades to come in and do, you know, furniture packages, which, you know, may be a little more extensive than furniture packages and things like that. And, and so the, the you know, this workflow in Fieldwire where I, I can automatically sync uh, my drawings to Dropbox, which means that my field team, out there is redlining as yeah. um, they're doing what they're supposed to do, right? They're redlining as they go, not six months later from memory, but if they're redlining as they go, because we've given them this tool that's in the palm of their hand, um, it automatically syncs with Dropbox. And now the owner can just pull out, you know, I don't have to go through this big production to assemble yeah. redlines. Um, they're already done. We did them as we went and they're sitting there waiting for um, somebody to access and they can start to access those. And the two-way sync um, can allow them to add some comments on their own in whatever markup program they use and put them back and, and we can see those in the, in the field. So I, there's, just a, there's just a lot of possibilities and that kind of you... I saw something that you posted recently, probably on LinkedIn, um, that talked about Dropbox as a common uh, data solution. So that's yeah. kind of where I'm where I'm going with this. Can you tell what does that what does that mean, or expand on that a little bit? So one of the other aspects that I missed off on for from sort of my responsibility at Dropbox within this role is building out the ecosystem from partners. So you mentioned, you know, we've already talked about Fieldwire, we talked about Bluebeam. <laughs> I see Dropbox, so, you know, it's that single source of truth, common data environment. It, it's sort of one of those terms, right? It's a buzzword in the industry, but um, I don't see us as being the only solution that's there, but it's about how can we be that repository of content, right? And I say content on purpose because there's videos, there's photos, you know, we are well known for being able to view and, you know, edit and work around all different types of media or, or sure. con content per se. Um, and in that case, it's about extending workflows. So imagine Dropbox being sort of that backbone where then okay. we kick off workflows. So I just did one with time-lapse, which is a CCTV camera for, uh, which has AI involved as well for job sites. Uh, Verify 3D, that was an article that's all about clash detection. Um, that can be done in the cloud, right? So all these solutions that we're working together with. Um, so it's really about having one source of project documentation that's easy to use, low barrier to entry. So the C-level can also access their financials, the content that they require down to the owner, you know, with QR codes access to the, or the tenants on the, on the finished products. Sure. Um, and then kicking off those integrated workflows, really about end-to-end -end workflows. And beyond just what we do internally with e-signature capabilities, with forms, with, you know, visual content editing around video, around PDFs, to then prepare information to share or collaborate externally with others. Well, I think the, the what interests me about this whole concept and and what kind of triggered me with your Bluebeam presentation with Simple is is that low barrier to yeah. entry because you know we we've got we've got the large general contractors right the DPRs the McCarthy's the Oakland we've got the large general contractors using whatever Procore Plan Grid um, Autodesk Connected Construct you know we've 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 got we've got them using these um, you know somewhat complex and somewhat expensive systems you you don't you don't implement them this afternoon right there, there's yeah. a, there's a bit of a hurdle and and the 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 people that i see being left out in this whole uh, adoption of technology and digital workflows are like everyone else right all yeah. the trade contractors that are actually doing the work and that we rely on 
to do it, you know, hopefully do it right the first time, which we know we're not good at, right? We rework is, is one of our, our huge issues in, in the industry and, and always has been. Oh, yeah. um, so while we, we do see technology and digital workflows being adopted by the bigger companies that have, I don't know, maybe more capability to do that. They, they have some more expertise in-house. We've still got all of our trade contractors who, you know, maybe they've got a hundred, you know, maybe they're a decent sized trade contractor. They're, they're a concrete company or a drywall company with a hundred people out there in the field, but that's really not big enough to have an IT department yeah. to help them implement these, these solutions. So I'm really interested in, in this, in these sort of simple solutions, although yeah. they might not sound as cool and elegant as some of these other ones. Um, maybe we'll start using them. Well, and, and let me add, I mean, it's funny that you bring up, you know, like the DPRs and the McCarthy's or, and even the Procore's, the Autodesk Construction Cloud, the Oracle A Connects, you know, the uh, Trimble, uh, you know, uh, all of those project side as an example. We we see ourselves as sort of a win with, right? So we're, we don't see ourselves as a standalone. All of these larger companies as well, even though they have those Autodesk Construction Cloud, the Procore's, we find them also leaning towards a, they still need that content repository that allows them to, to your point, Jim, extend to those stakeholders that are not project-based, right? Those solutions are all project-based. What about all the content that happens before it's a project? What about all the content after the fact? Yeah. What about those collaborators like marketing, like, you know, mm -hmm. whatever, procurement, all of that that happens outside, you, they still all have some form of a repository where they are housing that content. And that's where we play a big role. And with our differentiators and being the e-signature capabilities, the visual content, I was excited to show Sean yesterday, or whenever, whatever day it was. Day before yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> you know, about, about Dropbox replay, what we're doing around visual content editing and video footage, what we can do, that's where Dropbox becomes more exciting because it's the PDF editing, you know, that those types of capabilities, the automation, the tagging, um, as you mentioned that, you know, convert to PDF as an example, file requests. There's so many things that, we're trying to bring to light um, that that we have as capabilities to enhance that sort of layer of, of uh, a repository. Yeah. So if I jump in from an AutoCAD perspective here, just, just quickly, um, basically everything that you're saying, I love because it's, as, as Jim quite rightly said, w we need to include literally the guy putting the door frame in and screwing in the hinges and all that kind of stuff. Because the... Rework, and we've discussed it with other guests, haven't we, Jim, as well? Amy Mark's been a prime example about reworking is one of the, it's probably one of the biggest bugbears across the whole industry. Because for me, as an AutoCAD guy, if somebody says to me, oh, redraw this because it's different on site, it's like, but I drew it that way because I wanted it that way on site. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's that kind of, you know, circular, you know, it's a bit like a circular equation in Excel. You're just going round and round and round and it's not working. But one of the things I love about Dropbox is, again, Jim mentioned it, converting a DWG to a PDF. Because one, once that PDF is created, it's a snapshot in time, it's fixed. And it can be tagged as such and say, it's like this now. Then when it goes out on site, it can be tagged, labeled, even better, e-signatured by myself to kind of say, this is the one you should be using. And it's... And you can start developing silos. I mean, when it comes to drawings, you're going to have, you could have a general arrangement silo for your floor plans. You could have a detailed silo yeah. for all of your details that you're calling off of those floor plans. But the lovely thing is, like you quite rightly said, everything's PDF. So anybody from the top all the way down to that guy screwing in those hinges for that door can just jump in and go, oh, Dropbox, click, yeah. done. And I can look at what I need to look at there and then. And that for me, just I'm the gatekeeper of those DWGs. I don't want people messing around with them. You know, they're there, they're signed off, they've been approved. You can play with PDF as much as you like. That's fine. I don't mind. And let me know what you want to change on the PDF through Dropbox. I'll update the drawing. Then you've got the versioning in Dropbox, which will allow you to see the latest version, which again is e-signatured off and done. 
but you know there, there's other technology there now as well um as as i mentioned to you just the other day um i haven't told you about this yet jim but this is a little pet project of mine um okay. I, you, we know about the drone everybody knows about the drone everybody knows about the drone already. Right. Everybody knows about the drone we're waiting for, we're waiting for drone for drone footage i have not seen oh wait well, now footage. now you're going to get some um i actually wh where i live i live in a little east yorkshire village in countryside similar to what you've got behind me on my backdrop and for some weird reason my camera's taking me out of focus don't know why it's uh, we're focusing on the background. Yeah, that's right. It's it does that sometimes. Let me just the, I'll just the AI it. heard you talk about the background and now yeah. focusing it's on probably the background. What it is? Let's yeah. try. I'm sure that. it is. I'm sure it is. And I, I guarantee you, on, go, that's better. On my phone soon, I'll have drones. Resolution on the camera. That was the problem. So. I've, I've yes, been you're going to get drone ads there. now. Everybody's getting yeah. drone ads. Now. But yeah, yeah, there'll be loads of drone ads popping up and everything else. Um, but the idea being is, obviously, it's a beautiful part of the world where I live. And I bought the drone for leisure activities. You know, I, I want to fly around the beaches and stuff that are nearest and things. I'm off to see the grandchildren in, in Australia in April as well. So I can do some nice flying around out in Australia too. But I thought to myself, I want to apply this in a technology context as well because it is that they are amazing little pieces of technology and i've just been given permission to do a complete drone survey of my local church my dad works very closely with the church in the village and they've asked me literally to do some drone footage so that they can have it for their promotional stuff and i thought do you know what this is great because i can do an entire survey of an amazing building that goes back to viking times and i can then wow reality wow. capture it bring it into CAD, store it in Dropbox, and I can almost create an entire project as if it was going to be a refurb or, you know, an as-built survey. And I thought to myself, this is a fantastic case study for me to get my teeth into all the technology that I want to fool around with. So hence, I got talking to Shireen. Jim, you now know about the church thing as well. <laughs> but, but the idea being is I want to be able to kind of, utilize this technology and i was trying to think of ways of pulling every kind of aspect in so i thought to myself it's got to go in the cloud because we've talked about file size with corey in the last beams and columns about how big those raw files are there, there, there's no way you can just stick them on a hard drive they're they're too big so cloud-based storage well you can't email them back and forth either right it's, yeah, it's no. too yeah. they're huge so you know sending one as an attachment on email email would probably kill somebody's email server yeah so the idea being, I thought, I need a repository for it. I need, obviously, the technology for it, which I've got. I've got the drone. I've got AutoCAD. I could play around with Revit with it as well, maybe. And I just thought to myself, let's have a look at this as a reality capture project and develop that workflow and process. And Dropbox was kind of the final piece of the puzzle for me because it, I then thought to myself, well, if, if I do this properly, I'm going to be able to develop, one, a 3D model that people can use, Secondly, a whole bunch of 2D drawings, which again, people can use. And I can store all this in my silos in Dropbox. Yeah. And yeah. the lovely thing about it is anybody with the appropriate link in Dropbox can view what they need to view. And it just, it was a no brainer for me. And like you say, it just works. Shireen yeah. said that to me the other day, it just works. And I was also talking to Stuart, who is a Dropbox employee over here in the UK. And it, I have to say, I've used all of them, Google Drive. I mean, I use OneDrive all the time here for the company and the company documents and everything else. And OneDrive is great, but everybody else has got to be using OneDrive for it to kind of work properly. Whereas Dropbox, it, it's all encompassing. It's, it's wonderful because I can look at it on my phone. I can look at it on my iPad. I can look at it on the desktop if I need to and so on. And I just thought to myself, this is the way forward. And also, more importantly... It's, it's leveraging those partners and the APIs as well. Mm -hmm. Because just having the ability to just, oh, there's a DWG. Oh, someone can just PDF, well, I can PDF that and automate that PDF conversion. I don't have to think to myself, have I set up the right page setup in AutoCAD? Am I sending it to the right type of PDF? Because you know that that's all automated in Dropbox. I don't have to think about it. I can just put the DWG file in. As long as the DWG file is accurate, we're good. Nice. So that, that's kind of my little pet project. So keep an eye out on that. That's just a little yeah, we, playing we around keep... with technology and, you know, being a technologist in inverted commas kind of thing. And but yeah, we... Dropbox will be a fundamental part of that. 
And I all think right, yeah, we've we've seen the drone. We just haven't seen yeah. the uh, we just haven't seen the drone footage. So well, yeah, I'm there'll, gonna be there'll be something. There'll be something. I'm just going to wait for the weather to improve because it's not one, working out here right now. Jim, hold on. Oh, but there's one piece that Sean. Oh, how are you going to share the drone footage? Yes, I, I'd yes. like to know that. It, this blew my mind. This blew my mind when I found out about this. <laughs> Well, here we're we are right. We're not quite halfway. We've been we've been talking for uh, close to thirty minutes, and I, I haven't mentioned yet um, that we do have like a, a, a swag giveaway uh, from from Dropbox, and and of course now that I want to show it, my uh, my slides and pictures of the swag are of course not showing, um, but that's okay. We have some Dropbox swag that we want to give away, but the way that you enter, um, and and we'll do the drawing at the end of the broadcast here. The way that you enter is you've got to go into chat and, and give us a comment, question, hello, where are you joining from? Like anything. Um, and and Let so, us know you're uh, so Josh, we've got uh, a question and, and we'll take some questions in a little bit as well. Um, Sharin, I don't know if you can see the questions on your side, yeah. but I'll throw, I'll throw those up in a minute. Um, we did have a comment, uh, Joe Mark, um, hopefully I'm pronouncing your name right, but uh, you commented earlier, if you're still on, shoot another comment in there because I forgot to hit the um, start collecting comments button just for the drawing. So we see your, we see your, uh, uh, your, your hello and I appreciate that, but shoot another comment in so you get entered in the drawing. It's all very uh, automated and automatic. And at the end, we'll press a little button that'll spin through uh, everybody's faces and, and pick one of you for the, uh, for the giveaway. So on, on that note, I think I wanted to extend how Sean's going to potentially a means in which uh, Sean will be able to share the drone footage. And it sort of goes towards Josh, um, your sort of comment and question. Um, that I'm ex excited about. Also just mentioning that you're an FAA certified commercial drone pilot. Um, so Dropbox has, right now it's it's um, in the early stages in beta, but accessible, you can go on online and, and request access to it. We have Dropbox Replay. So Replay is a way in which you can upload your vid or video footage. So it's a way to access video footage and you are able to mark up video footage. So imagine this for the drone for drone footage, mark that video footage up. You can collaborate live. So they're actual live sessions that you can invite participants in to collaborate with you. So you can view the footage together, mark up and comment. And it's commenting at the frame. So imagine if you, you know, want to look at something and there are a couple areas that you want to highlight um, to other individuals. You will be able to then comment at that particular frame. So it's about, again, simplicity, ease of use, and focusing your time, right? So I'm not spending, let's say it's an hour presentation, even, even this um, you know, podcast. Maybe the you can put the, the podcast recording into replay, and maybe I want to send it to a colleague and say, hey, there, you know, Jim and Sean made these really great comments. Um, I would like to highlight those comments. I can jump to those comments. So it's a quick way for you to be able to um, sort of focus and collaborate around video footage. So I'm super excited uh, about that with Dropbox Replay. And Sean, hopefully that's one that you'll you'll put oh, that. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. It's a URL, so no uploading or downloading a requirement. I know. Um, the thing that blew me away is it's if, if you'll pardon the blaspheming slide, it's just so damn accessible. Yeah. Because you literally just go, here's a URL to this video. Jump in. And they can jump in and you can, I mean, I mean, like you said, you know, the actual tools for marking up and everything are somewhat simplistic right now. But that's obviously going to be developed and changed over time. But the lovely thing is the video is running. So I've got my drone footage where I've been buzzing around the building. And like Shireen said, you know, you can focus in on an area. So if you're doing like a, a roof survey to check for leaks or, you know, any refurbishment that he's doing, you can just fly around that little roof area first and stop the video, mark it up. And that markup is your individual markup on the video. Yeah. So I'm not having to send the whole video to somebody and go watch an hour and a half's worth of drone footage and pick out the bits and email me with the bits that you need changing because that just, well, it takes time. And the lovely thing about this is I can go, here's the video highlight during the video which bits you want to see and i can go back to that and i can comment on those areas as well and the yep. lovely thing about it is you call it all up and then when you 3d model it 
those areas can be specialized actual models or drawings that can then go straight to the trades to be fixed. And that's what your next course needs to be, Sean, is, is yeah. bringing that into, because, because I, I feel like I've got the drone thing down. And by, and by the way, what you just mentioned with the roof survey is exactly why I am also following in your footsteps and getting the drone <laughs> because I have now talked myself out of uh, three projects where uh, the last one was this this really complicated uh, roof structure on this this uh, art center that we have in in Tempe um, that is is leaking, and they wanted me to design the uh, scaffolding to access this to go survey everything to figure out what the fixes are. And I walked out and I went. We well, yeah, need to do all that work. Just throw a drone up there and and you know find yep. it that way. And and of course the answer was, oh, that's a really good idea. And we don't need you anymore. Um, yep. So I, I figured I, I I better I better quit doing that. I, I better I better that's be able to say exactly it. why I got my drone license. It's right. because I now know that if somebody says to me, oh, I need you to kind of look at this building and let me know what needs fixing on it, I can just fly the drone around it. Yeah, but absolutely. Also, more importantly, I can fly off of cliffs and look at beaches. And things but like I feel that like that does need to be. Yeah, that's right. I feel like that needs to be your next course. Right? Is is I, I have this this footage. I've I've done my reality capture. Um, how do I turn it into a building information model or some yeah. sort of three D mm -hmm. um, object that I can actually then utilize and and even you know take you and I have talked about this. Take the the BIM file and convert it over to a 3D PDF that I can then that that you know me the non CAD and BIM person can uh, manipulate back in my Bluebeam software that that I'm really comfortable with. Well, um, oh yeah, it, that's exactly it though. the the whole The whole idea of all of this information and and we are bombarded with information nowadays. We we really are. Um, funnily enough, I was talking to my wife Michelle only this morning over coffee um she's just been on a course on how to market her business using tiktok right and we, we were both sitting there we're both in our 50s and it was like yeah this is really abstract it, it's not kind of regulated it, it's tiktok is really different and it's another little information stream and we're getting bombarded by all of these all the time i mean to give you a giggle my tiktok feed is full of diy tips and you know, power tool tips and tricks and all that kind of stuff right now. And recipes. I love I love watching people cook. That's one of my favorite things. So, you know, but it, it's it's another information stream where you're just storing information for future reference. Yeah. And what what I love about Dropbox is it it democratizes that entire process. But more importantly, if you need to regulate it or facilitate it, you can do that as well. Things like the legal side of it, the governance side of it, everything, yeah. NDAs, you know, financials you talked about, all yeah. that kind of stuff. So you could have, I suppose if you think about it from an AEC perspective, you could have a silo per building on a project. Yeah. And you've got everything for that building so that when you get to hand over to the new owner, you just go, there you go. Everything's in there. Exactly. And it, and due to the simplicity, it's something that the owner will easily be able to yeah. access and use. Yeah. Um, and we really pride ourselves on our search capabilities. Um, so there are you know, a couple, couple questions coming up that I'll, I'll just address quickly. But um, definitely don't hesitate to reach out to me on LinkedIn. I saw some questions about where to find workflow content. I have some that I've built out specifically for the vertical that I, I'm more than happy to share, um, as well as we do have a lot of content online that I can share with you as well. Um, I think where to start from a Dropbox perspective is that just setting up some team project folders and or team folders and really around that collaboration and starting to learn. You know, again, it, the, it's simple. It's not, it's not rocket science, right? It's simple, but it, it's very... I, I think it has a very strong foundation, as you mentioned, the, the version control, the version awareness, the edit history, all of that kind of content um, or the capabilities that we have within Dropbox. Even Rewind is one that I see quite heavily used in the industry. People delete things by accident, right? So you can you can bring that back, um, which is great. So that that's another aspect. Um, I would say that from 
from the learning piece. And there was one piece that I, I was just going to uh, touch about, upon, Sean, and I think it was really about the way in which, you know, we're bringing forth different capabilities. Um, oh, perfect. Thank you. But uh, bringing forth different capabilities like Dropbox Capture, uh, ways to simplify and have a more enlightened way of working, right? We're trying, going into sort of the TikTok, times have changed. Times yeah. have changed. Information's consumed differently. Um, people aren't reading long documents anymore. People don't want to be stuck in emails. How can we get away from emails? How can we, you know, how can we bring the information that's of critical um, importance directly to you? Um, so we also have Dropbox Dash, which you talked about the chaos. I, I th thankfully Jim's not going to let me show my um, how many tabs I have open right now. It, it's quite scary. Um, I swear I know where everything is, but with Dropbox ta Dash, so we have a wonderful search within Dropbox, but we also have a solution Dropbox Dash that actually is a universal search. So it searches your Gmail, your Slack, your Salesforce. So imagine if I'm like, ah, man, Jim and I were talking about that one, you know, let's say the one project we want to do together and I can't find that document. I can just put a couple of keywords and it does a universal search through multiple applications. So we're really focused on, on that simplicity, you know, living, I don't want to say in the TikTok world, but um, it's a different way to consume information. Yeah. Right. And we've got so much of it right now. Yeah. Like you say, you, you, you kind of want it right now. And a lot yeah. of the time, especially in the industry that Jim and myself work in, people want it yesterday. Oh, yeah. You know, you, you might have a guy sitting on site with a cement truck waiting to pour. Concrete and truck. Concrete and truck. Sorry. No, no, Jim, I'm sorry. Have you heard 20 trucks? Do you know? Have I heard? Tw okay, so I apologize. We've got cement trucks in the year. I'm a, I'm a you, mother. You open I'm a mother of three children and uh, three boys. And every morning when I take my youngest to school, he wants to hear 20 trucks is all about all the different kinds of trucks that are, exist. This morning he asked for the concrete truck. Actually, it's called the cement truck, according to that album. But I, I agree with you. <laughs> you, have, you have to listen to anyone with children. 20 trucks is amazing. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm gonna find my concrete truck versus cement truck picture. I know. Two different things. The cement <laughs> truck carries powder. Yeah. The concrete truck. This guy's um, obviously yeah. waiting to pour, and he needs to know the area of the site where to pour. And he's just looking at a you know a plethora of steel reinforcement on site. Doesn't know which floor to pour it into or whatever. And the lovely thing about that is somebody can be there with a phone and just go dunk. It's that one. It uh, and can you imagine having to deal with that? Say probably I don't know twenty years ago via email or via telephone. Yeah. It would be like oh, and of course back then phones didn't really have good cameras on them either, so you couldn't do a FaceTime or anything like that. And it just all of it, just everything. It like you say, it just works. And for me with the project with my local church, just a little light bulb kind of, especially when you showed me replay, that, that was just like, wow, that just totally blew my mind because it means that anybody can discuss that initial raw video information and you can isolate the actual important bits from the video because there's, as Corey said last month in Beams and Columns, you know, that there's a lot of stuff that you don't need, but if you don't survey it at the time, you can guarantee it's the one piece that you do need later on. So as long as all that information is stored away somewhere, nice and safely in Dropbox, you're covered. And then when that guy turns up with the concrete truck to pour, yeah, he knows where to pour. And I, I think importantly, searchable. So it's that e-discovery, right? I think that's that's important. All right, perfect. This is a good yeah, one. Well, I take a couple of questions because I don't know the. I'm not sure I know the answer to this, uh, Sharin. Sure. Yeah, that, that's a good one. And I'm, I'm happy with um, I'm happy with Christina as well because she mentioned if I may call you out that uh, Christina also shares the multiple tab <laughs> many tab uh, dilemma that I have um, but perfect okay so for cross collaboration <laughs> between teams and clients so there are multiple ways for access to the same file simultaneously so there are you know you can go on and um, add comments. It is co-collaborating. So if I have a PDF, 
I can be, all the three of us can be on and can add comments, can add our little uh, lightweight markups. When it comes to Microsoft, in that case, it's more of a, we do the online, it's a, um, a lightweight editing, co-editing where I can see a badge. So I can see at any given point that Christina's in that particular file, Sean's in that file, Jim's in that file. Hmm. We also have the extent of locking. So you can lock a file completely out. If you really are truly wanting to take over that file, make your edits, and you want to rest assured that nobody else has access to it, there's the ability to also lock that particular file. So there are okay. multiple multiple ways that one can um, can work together. Nice, nice. All right. Um, I'm yeah, gonna, I'm, gonna keep, I'm gonna keep you on the spot, Sharon. I'm gonna put wow. up. Um, can I just jump in, very Rachel from NC Screen yes. ER. Regarding Christina's question, very, very yeah. briefly, just very, very quickly there. Um, just before we jump in, sorry, Rachel, to jump over your question. Um, but basically, with AutoCAD, for example, if I've got a drawing open and someone else opens that file, it will only open it read-only. Yep. So if you've got that PDF in Dropbox, everybody can work on it. And it will log all of that information on that PDF in the Dropbox silo, which it has two advantages. One, it maintains the integrity of the DWG file because you've got the absolute truth in the DWG file. But secondly, in that PDF in Dropbox, you're then getting that dialogue about how to update the DWG yeah. to the next revision. Mm. I just wanted to get that out there just so yeah, people are aware of it. I think yeah, that's, nice. that's a great one. All right. Here, let's All go right. back to Rachel. All right. So Rachel, here, um, I guess I don't, everyone sees the question. So I, I'm used to reading, reading them aloud. So I, I won't, I won't read it. But this is a great question, you know, where where would really should you start? So I think it's always best to start from the fundamentals um, in really just understanding the difference between it will and it, it depends right um, on who that individual will be. If I'm purely going to be a consumer, it's going to be about that collaboration aspect that you want. To, if somebody else is per se uploading and doing the folder structure creation, um, then I, as a consumer, will only want to be able to learn more around the collaboration aspects. So how do I share information out pr properly? How can I analyze that somebody has received the information? Dropbox transfer gives you notification when somebody has downloaded. So for a particular trade, if somebody, you know, if you call, oh, yeah, I, I saw your information, you can call them out and say, oh, no, you didn't. I know that you didn't actually look at it. Um, so that would be one aspect that I would look at. I think another big piece from a learning perspective is around the, the selective sync, right? So that's always, you wanna make sure the mobile team is enabled with the latest information. So we have the offline capability for particular documents you can choose. Also that selective sync. So you wanna ensure that they get the fundamentals. It's almost the framework and a good understanding of that, which again is very simple, very easy. We have short videos um, online that are accessible. We like to give information in bits of information. We have what's called knowledge pills as well. So I think every video is less than three minutes. Um, that TikTok style, you know, co consumption of bits of information. Um, so those are the areas that that I would definitely focus on. Is is really the sharing, the viewing. Um, that's the most important piece. File request for a trade, you're asking for others to bring information to you without, it's almost throwing over the fence. They don't get to see what the content in the folder. Um, and then of course, mobile. Mobile's a big piece. Um, but again, thankfully, it's all very easy to use. So that learning curve is very low, um, if at all, right? It's, it's extremely low with Dropbox. So Sharin, two, two questions for you from me, um, the if I'm if I'm looking at this right, um, I see Dropbox.com slash businesses no slash business slash solutions slash construction. Mm -hmm. Is that where is that kind of the dropping off point for um, these these uh, industry videos? That that will be the, the an initial aspect. Um, the industry videos, those particular knowledge uh, pills at the moment, um, we will be I, they'll be sort of sent out through the Dropbox team. 
So okay. that's, yeah, so that's where I say we're working on, you know, ways in which to get that out more extensively. Yeah. Um, don't hesitate to reach me. I'm on LinkedIn. You can reach out. Um, we're looking at ways to to share that more extensively. But um, a good call out, Jim. And then and then my next question before we move on, because I think there's a couple more in the chat. Yeah. Um, but you you mentioned being able to see whether or not somebody has accessed a document or read a document, which is which is kind of interesting to me from. Um, I don't know, maybe I'm I'm playing the role of the general contractor and uh, that's where I put a change order or some instructions or a really important RFI. Um, I have the ability, if I, I, I'm, I'm, this is a question, did I follow you correctly in that I have the ability to go see if everyone has at least accessed or looked at this document? So with we have we have two uh, let's say two extensions of this. We have with Dropbox yeah. itself the ability to see the download and the view, right? So if somebody has actually taken the content with Dropbox transfer and and viewed that content, now we have. If you want to go extreme, what we're actually seeing um, with Drop DocSend, which is another solution, Dropbox DocSend. Imagine this as a sort of almost a data, secure data repository in the cloud. So let's say, and we see this used a lot for the bidding process um, where you wanna get, it's more for an external sharing. Um, so I have information like bidding process, right? I have a bid package, maybe I'm building a data center for Google and that's you know NDA information that- Yeah, those are secret, we can't talk about them. <laughs> yes, yes, so that's all secret, but what you can do is have the highest level of security on that sharing. So you can have down to NDA. So I can even say it has to be an at dropbox.com email. So you can exclude me sharing it out with my husband or with friends, right? So they won't be able to access the link. Um, it could be domain, you could block domains if you don't want competitors or others to, to access. Um, mm -hmm. And more importantly than just the security of the access, this is where you really truly get the insights, the analytics into who's viewing and what. So Sean looked at, Sean gave me a bid proposal. He looked at the bid package, multiple documents. I can have video in there. I can have multiple uh, documents, PDF, the plans. And you know what? Sean totally skipped over the, you know, the specifications detailing out the types of materials that we're yeah. looking for. If it's I'm, not on the plans, if it's not on the plans, we're, you know, we're ignoring it. <laughs> but, but, but it gives you it gives you that insight to the time spent on each slide, on each page. So it, it or, you know, it's very insightful. Um, yeah, that's a great, that's a great example. Exactly, exactly. So there's a lot of, and I think that's what I'm really trying to get out there is Dropbox is more than file sync and share. Like we've been known for that. We've been around for that. Um, right. But there's so much more out there that can be done and really speaking about it contextually, even about the file requests, like, hey, this is a URL that you can scan a barcode while you're out on site to get an inspector or a third party to upload photos, to scan to PDF their inspection report that might still be paper-based and get it into your repository. Like the, it's just yeah. about Interesting. thinking how yeah. to, in a workflow, in an end-to-end -end workflow manner, thinking about the capabilities that we offer and, and the problems combined with the problems or the tasks that we're doing on a daily basis. And it doesn't have to be massive. How can we just solve? Uh, there was an article this summer, and I mentioned this in Bluebeam, at the Bluebeam conference. Uh, there was an Economist article which shocked me at how much time we spent deleting emails every, every day, right? Or how much time we spend searching for things. Um, over our lifespan or over our career. So if we can save somebody time with scanning receipts, I saved a company time and money, more importantly. They still had paper. Uh, I was looking for paper. I do have paper receipt. Oh, this is actually Powerball. Uh, didn't win. Not much. <laughs> but um, but still, you you scan, scan receipts like material delivery on site, which in some yeah. cases still come paper. <clears throat> Absolutely. This, this company was putting, having the field crew put all those receipts in their vests. At the end of the week, they would drive into the office from the site, which could be one mile to a hundred miles, right? Or from the distance. And then they would stand at the photocopier and scan. Hmm. 
Like all that, all that can be done with scan to PDF or scan to PNG. It can go in the right folder immediately with folder automation can be named properly, right? It, it's about making your life easier. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And the, so the wheels are spinning on another, on another oh. course, you know, Sean, I don't, I don't know if our content manager is watching our live stream or not, but yeah, my, <laughs> my wheels are spinning. The wheels are spinning on another course. I, so I, I, you know, I spend, I, I spent a lot of the last seven, eight, 10 years, whatever, um, more on the commercial side of construction. And now I'm working with another group and I'm, and they're pulling me back into the residential side of things. And, you know, as much as we talk about, Oh, in the last few years, uh, the construction industry has really started to adopt digital yeah. workflows and technology and things like that on the residential side. And I'm not talking about the person doing a remodel. I'm talking about the big home builders building 2000 homes a, month, uh, a year. Yeah. Um, nothing, nothing. They're doing yeah. nothing um, because it's, and, and it's, it's, um, and, and actually here we, I think this, this kind of goes to I one of our reading that. Yeah. questions here. Yeah. Um, is the construction industry globally ready for a change in the way the on-site works are being done with so much tech, giving so much input? Um, you know, one of the, I, I, I'm calling out the, 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 the residential industry, but, um, you know, one of their issues is they're dealing with many times much smaller trade contractors, mm -hmm. much more turnover. Um, maybe it's a big trade contractor, uh, but they're never going to get the same crew. And, and so, you know, training them and forcing them all onto a platform like, um, you know, plan grid or field wire or something like that is really difficult um, because maybe they're not going to be on your job for long enough to even sort of learn that. But some of these very simple solutions to maybe just take the next step and get us there of like scan the delivery tickets. That's that's another great, great yeah. example. Because yeah. yes, I guarantee you all of the delivery tickets in the ready mix concrete trucks are being signed and handed to uh, the, the, uh, you know, the, the, the crews on site and, uh, back to my concrete days, I, I want those tickets. There's a, there's some yeah, yeah. information on there that I want and, um, yeah, just, you know, click and scan or here's a, I have that a as well. you, you got a really, you got a, you, you've just kind of got me thinking off slightly on a tangent there as well with regard to scanning stuff. Yeah. We yeah. all have a phone with a camera on it right now. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I would say probably for about the past five years, all cameras scan QR codes on phones now. Mm -hmm. So he here's a, a perfect utopia on a construction site for you. Every area has its own QR code. Yeah. When you scan the yeah. QR, QR code with a phone, it just goes to the appropriate place in the Dropbox. Exactly. The appropriate yeah. document, PDF, drawing, whatever. I mean, if, if you think about it that way, th this kind of goes back to that question that just popped up. You know, we, we need to make sure that the guys that own these companies realize how much time is wasted. Yeah. Like you said, in front of a photocopier with those, you know, bills of delivery and everything else, it 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 it's like, wow, why are we doing this still? Well, we don't need to. And I, I think you would both bring, and I love this is sort of the way we're um, I mean, looking at at the time. I don't want to say closing this off, but it's such a wonderful topic. Um, I, so I, I work globally, so I see all different, you know, there was a question about the digitization globally and if the industry is ready. We see all different forms, right? Where there are companies that that are taking it on extensively to robotics, to everything, where others are still heavily paper-based. And, you know, my, my thing is they're twofold. Well, multiple things. I think it's about number one, ease of use, because the biggest thing that I get pushed back on is the barrier of, oh, the crew, everyone out there, they're, they're you know, of a different generation. They're not used mm -hmm. to technology. That's one of the biggest things that I hear, as well as, and that's where you have to prove out the value. Um, it has, to, if you can prove the value out, um, reduce the barrier to entry, right? I, I think that's going to also help quite dramatically. Um, and, and it's just, you know, it's something that we're seeing globally slowly being picked up, picked up. And I think another thing is we don't have to boil the ocean one small step at a time, right? One small increment, one, this one company that I would talk to, I showed them all the bells and whistles of Dropbox. They're already Dropbox users. 
they chose to pick scan to PDF. They said, you know what? It's too much to go folder automation right now. It's too much to this X, Y, Z. We're just going to start with scan to PDF. Let's take one task and process and digitize it. And those incremental, right? Those incremental steps that we can make towards digitizing, towards getting more value and ROI. You know, I'm hoping that that's where we can slowly, slowly start to see that change happening. And another piece is the ease of use and going back to TikTok, rack, wrapping it up with the younger generation coming in. We need to make things. I, I don't know if I can say this word, but I won't say the word, but we need to make things more fun to use. We need to make things right. They have to be intuitive. They have to be fun. They have to be short. They have to be, you know, I'm not going to want to read a big manual or go into a complex product. The, the, right. I mean, well, that, nice. that's it. You, you've nailed it. it, it yeah. The whole idea is that democratization of that information so that everybody knows where it is and can just go click. Yeah. Rather than, well, back in the day when Jim and myself first started in the industry, when we sat there at our drawing boards with our parallel motion bars and set squares. You know, I mean, <laughs> when I think about how long it used to take me to get a revised drawing out of the door back then, you know, that would take me sometimes a week. Whereas now and, I can revise a drawing in a couple of hours and it's out and it's done. And Sean, uh, believe it or not, I have I have a company locally that I work with and I'm not going to call them out this time. I've called them out in the past. I'm going to leave them alone. But when I go into their office, they still have that same drafting table and the 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 vellum tracing paper and, and they're still oh, in. And, and so, yes. The industry is adopting technology, but no, not everybody is adopting it at the same pace and yeah. not everybody is on board. And it's not even, you know, we had the the comment by Ernest a minute ago um, about, you know, his part of the world and and, and very slow adoption or no adoption. And um, and I think that that's part of it. But but again, I'm, you know, down the street, no, no adoption either. Um, yeah, and, cool. and all of these tools readily available. So yeah. Um, Sharin, I, this is we, we're going to do a drawing here in a minute, but we 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 really appreciate you joining us. Um, I think this has been a great talk. Uh, we've got some great ideas for some follow up and some workflow ideas, and so we will we will definitely keep uh, keep talking about this. Absolutely, we're gonna we're gonna see if I can roll, roll, roll that trombola drum. Jim. Do a drawing. Yeah. Here. See what happens? All right. I think this is such a clever feature. I love this. <laughs> oh, 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 wait, oh. winner, <laughs> VJ. VJ, one. <laughs> I love it. Um, so, VJ, if you if you are still on, um, if you would direct message me on LinkedIn, uh, then we can get your information. I will get it over to Dropbox and they can ship everything out. Um, and if you are not still on, I will uh, I will contact you and, and we'll get everything out to you. But again, Sharin, we, we really appreciate your time uh, today. And uh, Again, we we have lots to uh, lots of ideas yeah. and lots to follow up on. So I, I love it. Yeah. Well, thank you, thank you. This was wonderful. Uh, I'm excited, excited for what the future holds. So let's continue, right? And I, so, I promise there'll be some drone footage up soon. I will. I, I, will I, I will put it in one of my blogs at some point soon. We we are waiting for the drone footage. The uh, next next oh. month, I think, is the drone footage. Pressure's on. Yeah, I, it, it'll have to be next month because I, I, I'm in another country in April, even though I will be doing <laughs> beams and columns from that other country. Oh, no yeah. beams and columns from Australia? Yeah. Yeah, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll take the gear with me. I'll make All sure right. that we've got a, got a mic and a camera with me. I'll stick them in the suitcase. All right. Well, we'll see everybody in March. Thank you again, everybody. Thank you. Take care. Thanks now. Thank you.